I'm not going to even beat about the bush. I thoroughly recommend Nightmare in Suburbia. This is currently on the Crime and Investigation channel on Amazon Prime. And I watched all five series pretty much back to back over the course of a week. And I have to say it is fabulous. From a an editing perspective, it's very well put together. The transitions are pretty seamless. It utilises some reconstructions, a lot of interviews with people involved in these cases. Um, for the most part, these are murders. And where suitable, it uses CCTV footage. And it is graphic. It does not hold anything back. There is one particular case. I won't tell you anything about it, although it broke my heart. Um, I will just say it's the one that involves the fire. And it shows some images from the police archives of a burn victim. And those images are brutal. So this really does have a lot of tools at its disposal. And it really utilises them and really sews them together really well. And visually to watch it, it's really great. The other thing that I absolutely adored about this is that all of these cases are quite unique. None of them are really the same. I mean, there are some where you have... You know, I don't know, a son murdering a mother, repeating a few times. Most most of these are familial crimes, but not all of them. And obviously the one thing that makes this unique, or I guess it's, it's selling point, it's MO, if you like, is that it's executing these narratives with the thread that they're all from suburbia. It's, it's called Nightmare in Suburbia. It's a little bit misleading, because... The first episode, absolutely the first episode, really focuses on this, you know, this suburban area where the family's got a lot of money or they are perceived to have a lot of money. And they live this, you know, this lavish lifestyle where everything's rosy on the outside. And then, of course, crimes happen on the inside and you never know what goes on behind closed doors. And absolutely a lot of cases in this are like that. But I feel like a lot of them are just your average next door family so i guess what it's trying to say is that this is not about crimes committed on people for whom it might be harder to feel sympathy i'm talking about crimes where drug dealers are murdered prostitutes are murdered these are slightly higher society murders mostly middle class and i love that because it's more i was going to say it's more relatable i've never been murdered but I guess it's it's more it's more slightly terrifying because it could happen to your next door neighbor. It could, unfortunately, it could happen to you, and I hope it never does. Whereas, if you're watching, say, I don't know, a, a drug raid and somebody being murdered there, there's a lot of distance between the average viewer and that situation. But nightmare in suburbia, it could be your next door neighbor, and that's what makes this really compelling. The other thing I love about this, aside from the great storytelling is that I had only heard of one of these episodes. There are 29 episodes across five series. And the last series was in 2014, I believe. And that sucks. Because that, to me, suggests there won't be any more episodes. And I really, really wish they did some more. But why I love this is because I'd only heard of one out of the 29. And interestingly... This one case was actually the subject of a three or four part drama from the investigator of very British crime. And I, I loved that series. And this was really kind of really interesting that it was condensed into a well, a 45 minute episode. But I think it worked really well. So while it could have been a four part drama as a four part documentary as it has been, they got a lot of it across in that kind of confined time. Most of these are shocking, but they're small scale. They're not going to make the national news. And I think that just really makes it more interesting because while I love watching documentaries about serial killers or you know people who murder their entire family and it makes the national press, it just goes to show how many serious crimes are committed on a daily basis that we never ever hear about and the victims don't really get any 
Okay, I don't want to say attention, that's the wrong word, but we never hear about the victims. And that's pretty disturbing. And I guess this is what this entire series is about. It's about the murders next door that we never hear about. As I said, each episode is very well put together. Some episodes don't have any CCTV footage or police archive images, but it still works really well. We have a decent level of reconstructions. And they're also not casting up. They seem to cast younger. A lot of reconstructions will cast actors, mainly with women, who are more conventionally pretty than the victim or suspect. But with this one, I think they got the likenesses quite good. The the likenesses were quite well, but they seemed to age them. You know, like if, if, if somebody was murdered when they were in their late 40s, in the reconstructions, they'd get like a 30-year-old actress. It was very bizarre. Um, But I think the recons were done pretty well. Some of these are very emotional and very hard-hitting. Particularly, as I said, that one about the fire. And when you get to that one, it's... Okay, I'll tell you, it's the Bimson family. So when you get to the episode about the Bimson family, Google it afterwards. There's something really shocking that happened... Um, last year, related to that, obviously a long time after this was filmed, it's it's painful, but it's it's worth following up on so you can see how this devastation continues. I absolutely love Nightmare in Suburbia. I strongly urge you to watch it because it's it's unique in some aspects, not unique in others. It's produced by Nine Lives Media, bit of an unfortunate name for a true crime series, but I truly enjoyed it and. I'm pretty confident that if you like true crime, you will like it too.